Hello everyone and welcome back. So uh, the last time that we did in our uh, uh, tutorial was uh, uh, we demonstrated uh, using for loop to generate numbers from 1 to 10. And we learned uh, we were able to achieve that uh, using the increment and decrement operators as well. So in this video, we will try to come up with a more uh, realistic scenario. And uh, you know what? The, the most important thing in learning how to code is once you learn something new, you try to apply it right away. It doesn't have to be real world, doesn't have to be something realistic. Uh, if you cannot think of anything, uh, it doesn't have to be a big one. Uh, applying means using the same concept in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a different situation that you can think of. It could be anything. So right now, basically what we, what we are going to do is something like that so that it will uh, reinforce our learning and we will be able to retain more the information that we have learned because uh, if we will not be able to retain what we have learned, uh, it's useless uh, to go through with the learning process when it comes to learning a programming language such as uh, JavaScript. So anyway, we're going to create a new project, right? So I'm gonna head over to the same location. You know this already if you have been following this series. So I'm going to name this a uh, for loop uh application uh what we're going to do is we will generate like uh, uh a, a data on a table using for loop okay so let's create our index.html file uh, we're going to be using just a little bit of css and most importantly of course our javascript file over here so let me just uh, close this one right click open with live server and so that we will see what's happening here as we go along and type the code in our project let me drag this uh, partition to the left so we have more space on our code and i'm going to link first the style that says it's right over there right above the closing body tag is the script.js right there it is so we're going to name this for loop or generating uh, data on a table using for loop. Okay, we can also copy that and we'll type an h2 here. Put the right, put the title on so we can see it here. Hold on, why is it not? Uh, let me just uh, uh, drag this again and open with live server. There you go. All right. So sometimes it happens, the live server sometimes doesn't work. Just go ahead and right click it again and open it. <laughs> uh, and if it, if it doesn't work, close the uh, VS code and then uh, uh, relaunch it. And if it doesn't work, restart the computer. Uh, basic troubleshooting. So anyway, we're gonna be creating a table here. Let me create one for you, T head. Okay, we have a, an HTML tutorial on how to create a table here is in this channel as well. All right, so for the th, we'll, we'll just type here uh, uh, a pound sign, something like that. And over here, uh, the name, we'll just have a list of fruits, okay? Name of fruit. And then the data, so it's going to be tr for table row. Uh, the data here, for example, we have number one and another data for the name of fruit, for example, apple, okay? So uh, what we're trying to do is we are going to use JavaScript in order to generate something like this uh, dynamically on the, on the page, not manually typing it like what we're doing uh, at the moment, okay? Uh, let me change this one. Uh, let me just delete, delete this one. All right, so right now we just hard-coded all of this in order to come up with this one. Uh, let, let's style that one first. Oops, sorry about that. We are going to target the table and assign a border of one pixel, solid, then black. There you go. And we're gonna be targeting also the uh, th and assign a border, right? And td as well, assign a border. So we're gonna say table and then, hold on. So table, t head, you know what we we can just target the th right away table th there it is then we're gonna say border uh, we can just copy this actually 
there it is okay then we're gonna be copying this again one more time but instead of targeting the th right here we already have that border as you can see we are going to target the td right so same thing just change this to td and there you have it and in order to make this like a normal table you can target the table itself and you're going to say border oops not border but border collapse and then collapse now we have a more or less a uh, normal table and i guess we can assign some padding hold on we can actually this one we can refactor this we can cut this one put a cam over here paste it right there delete this one and we get the same result and over here we can now assign a padding of around 10 pixels so we have some more spacing maybe just around five pixels uh okay oh i was i was zooming uh quite a lot <laughs> that's why uh, okay i think 10 pixels was good there you go all right so now we have apple banana and pear on the table uh, let's move on to javascript we're going to be creating an array of fruits so we're going to be naming our array as fruits and here is going to be a list of fruits so for example apple uh, banana make sure that they are enclosed with a double quotes single quotes will work as well uh, pear uh, watermelon okay if i'm running out of spaces i also love to do to, to format my array into something like this you don't have to by the way i just wanted to show you if you like this uh, feel free to copy what i what i do as well uh, this way i can easily add more right so for example i want uh, uh, pineapple okay and uh, what else do we have uh, can we search for fruits uh, list of fruits okay apricot okay now it's easy we can we can basically just copy from here all right there you go uh the last item in our array we don't have to put a comma so anyway those are our fruits right so we have our index.html and we have a sample a preview of what is going on by hard coding the fruits but we want this to be dynamically uh, created here based on the items in our array if you will go back to the previous video we have a lesson about array so and we know that we can access the array items over here by using the index right so we type the name of the array if we wanted to access the very first item we know that computer starts counting from zero so this one uh, should be in uh, index zero right if we click here in our preview we press f12 on the keyboard so we bring up the console uh, developer tools uh, for the meantime let's go ahead and console that log uh, the value of fruits with an index of zero and of course when we save this we get apple and the last one over here zero one two three four five okay so this is index five we get uh, avocado so now let me delete this one and uh, i'm going to show you uh, you know uh, if you can remember we can actually type the name of this variable over here in the console window and we press enter we will we we can access those items over here for troubleshooting purposes we get the index and the value of each item in our array and look at this at the, as at the bottom uh, this is uh, an important thing right now in this video this length it says six computer starts counting from zero one two three four five but over here uh, the the length of the array itself is six right so six items but we start counting from zero but still the length is six there you have it and and if we are going to uh, refresh this by clicking this icon right here you can we can go ahead and console that log like the length the length of this fruit the length is actually a javascript method okay if we do that we get six because we have one two three four five six items in our, in our array and uh in our uh, if we are going to add more i'm gonna add, add a comma here i'm going to 
uh, copy some of these fruits over here from Wikipedia. Make sure they are enclosed with double quotes. If we go back here, now we have seven items. That's the length of our array. And we're going to use this in our for loop application, right? And also we're going to use what we have learned in creating elements on the page. Right now we're just logging that, right? So uh, let's go ahead and delete this one. In fact, I'll just comment that out. We might be able to use that. So the for loop structure is like this, just like the if else statement. But over here, we create a variable. It could be A, B, or C, or X. I'll just type I, right? I'm going to initialize that value to zero while I is less than, uh, for example, how many items we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. While I is less than seven, I'm going to keep adding uh, one or increment to one uh, to the variable I. And while I'm doing that, I can now go ahead and console.log. For the meantime, we know that if we're going to type I over here, we save our work, we will be able to generate seven zero one uh, it's like a we, we generate numbers right all right so we have seven over here do not let it confuse you uh, it's because of this let me delete that one all right so now we are, we are able to generate numbers from zero to six and we can use these numbers to access each item in our array as their index right remember index zero is apple so instead of console logging i we can actually type fruits over here and enclose that with a square brackets. If we save this, we were able to access apple, banana, pear, and so on and so forth. Amazing, right? Remember that we are able to access the items in, in the array using their index, right? But we are, in our for loop, we are actually generating this i over here, and we just utilize the value of each value in, in this variable every time that this loops iterates okay every time uh, every time that it keeps on adding one while i is less than seven all right so what happens if we have an additional uh, fruit here let me cop copy one of this piece it like that and another one maybe uh, uh cherry i don't know what's catmon but cherry Okay, that's more familiar. Well, if we save this, we only get until uh, blueberry, cat one and cherry doesn't show up until we change this to nine, right? Now we will we are able to uh, access them. But this is not this is not this is not yet the ideal uh, code that we can do. We want this code to be flexible, right? We want this to be flexible that uh, whenever uh, the array here is being updated we don't have to change anything here right so we can we can imagine this as our database right now we are still a beginner at our level right now but eventually uh, this knowledge by the way is is prerequisite for you to be able to create a database driven application the database is a, is a separate technology right when every time a user register for a social media or or in, in, in a certain website that's an additional data, and uh, the, 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 the programmer don't have to, to go to the code base and edit the code because uh, there is an additional member on their site, and that's global, right? You will, not, you will not be able to catch up with that. So it has to be dynamic. And we can do that by using the length method in JavaScript, the one that I showed you earlier. So instead of saying while i is less than to nine, we can basically say while i is less than the fruits or the length of the fruits, right? We save this, we still get the same result because basically right now, fruits that, that, that length, if, if we are going to console that log, uh, that one, let me just copy this to make it faster right now that value is actually nine and if we keep adding more all right let me just uh, copy this like so put a comma over here and i'll just uh, edit each item like so there's a lot of fruit that i don't know here 
So anyway, when we do this, as you can see, those items, we don't have to change the code, but it is, it is automatically being uh, registered here. It is being read by this for loop because this for loop is now flexible. It will depend on the, le on the length of this array. Uh, and no matter how much item we, we keep adding over here, no matter how many uh, users are re registering to Instagram or Facebook, the length of the, I mean, the, the, the number of items of users is still being calculated by, 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 by the code automatically without having to change it. Let me delete this one because we are going to take this a little bit further. We are not just going to, you know, generate this data into our uh, um, in console.log, but we are going to create it on, on HTML right here dynamically on HTML. So therefore, we need to remember what we have learned in the create element uh, method topic here in JavaScript. So if we're going to head back over here in HTML, uh, we know that we have to create a TR, right? Because we, basically, if we copy this, we get that an, an additional row. It's just that our data is not dynamic. So right now, let me just delete uh, until we only have one remaining for reference. So what we're going to do now in JavaScript, we can go ahead, let's delete this one. Uh, we can create a variable. We're going to be creating a TR, right? Uh, let tr is equals to document that create element and this is going to be tr right and we want the tr to have an inner html okay not just text content not just text content but inner html because we need an a html element inside of it in, in its inner part all right uh, and the inner html that we want we can just basically copy this and uh, put here an equal sign. Use the back tick on the keyboard. All right. I already I, I already teach you where that part is. I'm going to uh, put here some image on on this video uh, for you to see that if you forgot. Uh, so use the back tick. Two back ticks. In fact, if you just type one, it will automatically be completed to two. And paste right here the HTML that we have copied from this area. So now that we have done that, right? We can now go ahead and append this one right but we don't have a reference yet uh, for the parent of this tr its parent based on this structure is the t body so we can assign an id here or a class i'm just going to use an id i'm just going to say my t body or you can name that whatever you want i'll go ahead and copy that and create a variable right here let my t body is equals to document that query selector and since it's an ID, we're going to be using a pound sign like so. Uh, say my colon here at the end. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see more code. All right, so now we have my T body. We can now go ahead and copy that. Paste that in here. Let me just fix the indentation. Dot append child. And what is it that we are going to append? We are, go we are going to append this TR. And remember, this is happening every time that this loop is while the eye is less than the length of the fruits okay see my colon here at the end and i'm going to delete this one right here so make sure that your t body don't have any more data and there you have it as you can see we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve items and we have 12 items here in our array one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 12 all right now the problem is it only contains one apple one apple etc uh, because we have hard coded it here in our code so we want to access this right we, we we know already we have an idea that we can access that using the index right using this i variable and that's what we're going to do it's just that i haven't teach you yet this technique there's like a syntax in JavaScript when you are using backtick. Okay? Again, this is useful when you are using backtick. Okay, so backtick uh, right here instead of one, we are going to use here a dollar sign, and then braces or curly brackets, no matter how you call it. Okay, some people call it braces, some people call it brackets. 
So it's a syntax, it is what it is. We have to get used to it. The more you use it, the more it becomes second nature to you. Just like what I'm doing right now, I'm coding on the fly. Of course, I prepared just a little bit before I started recording the video, but uh, you know, uh, mastery on any topic, even if it's not about programming, comes, uh, you can only gain or earn that skill with practice, repetition, you keep doing it. All right, so anyway, dollar sign, curly brackets. Inside here is a variable, for example, i, right? So instead of one earlier, we, we, we type the one over here. We are now using the dollar sign and then curly brackets. Just let me go ahead and continue. Type here, uh, I'm going to type now the fruits and then square brackets and then I. If we are going to save this, look at that. Okay, amazing, right? So zero up to 11 and we have apple based on what we have here in our array. But I'm going to delete like some of them and supposed to be the avocado is the last one. We save this and look at that, our website, our application is automatically updated and it is driven depending on the data available in this array. So we, if we are going to imagine that this is a database, so it is now kind of like a database driven application. Right now, we're just using an array, but the idea is the same. The idea is the same. You will not be able to create a database driven application if you will not learn this first, this kind of stuff. You have to master every, every, every time you learn something new in programming. Um, if you're trying to, like, sometimes you overthink trying to learn as much as you can first before you apply it. That, I don't know, but in my opinion, every time you learn something new, you try to apply it right away. Think of a new concept. It doesn't matter if it's a good or the best idea at all. Just use the, the concept, just like the for loop right now. That's what we're doing right now. We learned about for loop. We learned about create element. And what we're doing right now is to use this knowledge in order to come up with the dynamic table, right? We are use, we are also using the, our knowledge on array right over here. We will not be able to do this without those prerequisites that we have learned in the past. So anyway, going back here, remember the syntax, okay? Inside the dollar sign and the uh, curly brackets or braces, it has to be a variable, right? And this one, while the value of i is being iterated, we are able to generate these numbers over here before we are just logging that to the console right now we are displaying that on the page because we have this create element we put we created the tr on the fly using javascript method create element assign an inner html for this tr and app append this child tr to the mighty body uh, element over here in our index.html and of course, if we wanted to start counting from one, we have to modify our code, right? So we can actually do it right here. Remember that this is the this part right here is being rendered using this line of code here in line 17 on my end. It might be different uh, on you, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I'm seeing here is just add one here and we will be able to fix that as you can see right there. And I hope that this has been informative for you guys. And have a great day. See you in the next one.